Hey, I see this great question that you posted about the normal distribution, and I'm going to record this video to help you answer it. I'm expecting that this video is probably going to take a, a, a bit of time because uh, there is a lot that we need to cover to uh, explain the answers to these questions. So I'll get started. First thing always that you want to do, obviously, is look through the problem statement for the key information that you're being given. So first thing I'll do is point out some of that stuff. Uh, first thing, we are given uh, an average of 129.28 seconds. We're given a standard deviation of 2.26 seconds. We are very importantly told that this uh, is normally distributed. If we aren't given this, and if you are ever not given uh, this in the problem statement, or you can't, you don't have the information to prove it yourself, the way that we're going to answer this question, you cannot do. So it's only if you're told that this is normally distributed that we are even able to approach it this way. That's going to be uh, using uh, the Z table. Heads up there, I think there's also a way to solve this on a calculator. I believe it's using the normal CDF function, but I never learned that way. So I'm going to teach it to you by hand. Um, and X is going to be the number of seconds for a randomly selected lap. Uh, and we want to give as many answers as we can uh, with four decimal places. So let's get started. Uh, first question is just, this is just asking you for the specific notation uh, of writing this kind of thing. And so when you see it writ uh, written this way with the X tilde N and then parentheses, the values that are gonna go inside, the first one is gonna be your mean uh, notated by mu. And the second one is going to be your variance notated by sigma squared. Uh, and so we're actually given this information in the problem statement. That mu value is going to be your average uh, of 129.28. And then your uh, variance, uh, again, notated by uh, sigma squared, is just going to be your standard deviation squared. So you take that 2.26, you're given the problem statement, uh, square it, and you are given 5.1076. So let me write this out for you. It's going to be x tilde n. Uh, and then 129.28, So that's what this is going to end up looking like uh, when you hand it in. Cool. Uh, next question. Uh, so I would just want to sort of visualize first uh, what this is going to look like as we're going to be putting it on this normal distribution, because it is going to be key for you to understand this. The way we're going to go about this problem is by taking what we have uh, with X values, the actual uh, time in seconds that we're given um, in places like this. And we're going to convert it to a Z distribution where we can uh, more easily manage with those numbers. So the way that's going to look is that every value, every spot uh, on this uh, curve is going to have basically two values, one X value and a Z value. As you can see here, uh, where the mean is when we're talking about it in time in terms of x it's 129.28 but when we're talking about the normal distribution that value is going to be zero as you get out to each tick mark the difference in x is going to be that standard deviation of 2.26 but uh, when we're talking about it in terms of z every tick is going to be worth a uh, one on, on the on the uh, z distribution so that sometimes can get people a little tripped up but so let's get to it. So here we're given two X values on our distribution and we are trying to find uh, the proportion of uh, the proportion of our laps that are completed in between these two time frames. So what we can do is use our Z distribution to find the area of this whole section between the red and the blue line. So it's important to understand that anytime we're working with a, a normal curve, uh, the area from all the way over there when uh, the curve interacts with the x-axis and all the way over there when the curve interacts with the x-axis is 1. The area to the left of the mean is 0.5 and the area to the right of the mean is 0.5. So today, in, or at least in this part of the question, we're just going to be working uh, with, with uh, this side. So it's going to be important to understand that the whole area from here all the way to this point is 0.5. Cool. So we'll use this equation over here to uh, convert these x values into z values so that we can give it this little paired um, value as well. So we do that by placing this x value into this x spot in the equation. 
and we'll do that actually for both of these x values as well. So take a second and start doing that to try to uh, finish up this equation while I write out the answer. So when we're talking about that red one, uh, the z value that we're going to end up finding is negative 0 0.06. This one, so I have the new numbers. And then we're going to talk about that blue line, the, the value that we're going to be working with. Uh, again, that x value is 127.14. So this effect on the z score is going to be that it's negative 0 0.83. Great. So now what do we do with this? Now that we have our Z scores, uh, we are going to go to the Z table uh, to find out the specific areas. And what I mean by that, what the Z table is going to tell us, the information that we're looking for is on the Z table, see right here, it's always really important when you look at a Z table that you check this first, because what, what this says is we have, a, we have our two Z values that we produced just now in that equation. This graph up here tells us what these numbers are actually going to mean. So what this chart is saying that when you find your specific z-score on this table, what the number inside that corresponds to it is going to tell you the area on the curve that is less than that z-score. So remember, from here out, that area is going to be 0.5, and that's going to be helpful uh, soon. So as we find our first one of negative uh, 0 0.06, we're going to find take this one. It's actually not even on here. Let's find it. Let me pull this up. And we're the intersection of that and 0. And that ends up being right here. No, it's not. I'm sorry. It's this one. 0. 0.4761. So this is what that tells us on here. That the area out of 0. 0.5 from here on out is 0. 0.4761. Great. Now let's do this for our second z value. And that z value is negative 0. 0.8. Eight three. So negative zero point. I'm sorry. Over here on the left, we'll find negative zero point eight, and then on here we'll find point zero three, and look at the intersection, which is going to be here. So with this saying, we have our number point uh, two zero three three. What this is saying is that the area of this z-score all the way to the left is 0 0.2033. Now, this is uh, how we're going to finish out this question. So we're obviously going to be looking for the area of this place. We can't find that on the z-table. So what we can do, though, is we understand um, that if we subtract 0 0.2033 from 0.4761, it's going to eliminate this whole area over here. And we're just going to get this nice little sliver. Does that make, uh, let me just repeat that to make sure that that makes sense. Because if you, if you, when we calculated this 0 0.4761, that's telling you the area from this Z value all the way to negative infinity. And 0 0.2033 is the area from that Z score all the way to negative infinity. So by eliminating by subtracting 0 0.2033 from 0 0.4761. What we're doing is effectively eliminating everything over here. And you're just getting that sliver of the 0 0.4761 that's covered by this specific region right here. This is the messiest part I've ever made, I'm sorry. Uh, so when we do that, 0 0.4761 minus 0 0.2033, we get our answer of 0 0.2731. Two, eight. So we know that the area of this 
little sliver right here is 0.2728. Or the probability of this swimmer uh, finishing her lap within this time frame is, is uh, 27%. So the question specifically asks, find the proportion of her laps that are completed before uh, between those two uh, areas. And that answer is going to be, again, what we just found by subtracting those, 0.2728. That's your answer on that one. Great, let's go to the next one. The fastest 3% of laps are under blank seconds. So this is how we're gonna do this one. Uh, so again, this is a just representation of our normal curve. The fastest 3% are gonna be uh, the times where when she, if, when she lands somewhere on this curve, the fastest 3% are gonna be just somewhere over here. That's where that cutoff is going to be. So what we're going to try to do is find out what is the specific cutoff on this where the area to the left of that z-score is 0 0.03. Because the fastest uh, time, the, the threshold to meet the fastest 3% is going to be where the area to the left of that z-score is 0 0.03. So what we can do is go back to the uh, table and instead of using the headers to find our number and then having something on the inside to be our output, what we're going to do instead is find the area in the output and then uh, say it was it was this this number right here. Then we would use, we would look outwards to find the corresponding z-score. So we are looking for uh, the value that is 0 0.03. And it looks like that's going to, you always just find the closest one on this one. Sometimes it's in, betu in, in between two, but so here, 0 0.0301, we have a negative 1.88, negative 1.88. So what we know, this is all that we know, negative 1.88. So we, what we know is that this is our cutoff, that the area here, is 0 0.03. So we have our cutoff of negative 1.88. But obviously we're not using like negative 1.88 seconds or anything like that. Like that's not what we're working with. Uh, so we need to convert this z-score to its corresponding uh, x value. And the way that we do that is just by filling out this equation this way, negative 1.88. 8 equals x minus our mu value divided by our standard deviation. So you can fill that in and solve it. Uh, and when you do that, let's find out what you get. What we get is a corresponding x value of 125. 0 0.0312. And so what this tells us is that any time that she can swim uh, a lap faster than 125.0312 seconds, she'll fall within this range, which is going to be her fastest 3% uh, of times. So that's how you answer that question. And now look at the, let's look at this last one. Uh, the middle 60% of laps. Okay. So I'll use the same chart here for this one. And so the middle 60%. So because this is a normal curve, uh, and it's the same on both sides, when we say uh, middle 60%, we're going to refer to 30% 30, uh, 30 on this side, 30% on this side. So this is going to look a lot uh, similarly to the last question where we are trying to find the cutoff based on a specific area. So the area on this side is gonna be 0.3 and the area on this side is also going to be 0.3. So we go to our Z table.
uh, we find where the area is 0.3. Where is it? I cannot find it. Give me a second. Looks like it's going to be between these two. Okay. So what we do in this situation where you kind of have a little cutoff in between is that when we go up to find the corresponding value, we'll just look in between these two. So instead of saying 0.02 or 0 0.03, we'll just say 0 0.025. And that's usually fine. Um, and so, but our corresponding value is negative uh, 0.5. So negative uh, 0.525. Great. Okay. So going back here. Negative point. Five two five, and it's also going to work on this side, but it's just going to be positive point five two five. So z here is equal zero point five two five, and then this side it's equal to negative point five two. Five. And what we're going to do here is just convert these to um, x values using that formula. So go ahead and do that. I'm going to calculate it with you. And so when you end up converting these, uh, you get two values. Let me write out an equation for you. You get this. So what this tells you uh, is that these are the bounds. These are the thresholds in terms of actual uh, swimming time that will uh, be in the middle, uh, 60%. So it's important to just, you know, just check your answer is that the mean is going to be uh, exactly in the middle of this of this interval. So to check your answer, you would uh, take that that mean 129.28 and subtract 128.0935 from it see that that difference is a uh, 1.1865. And then add that to the mean and you'll want to get that top uh, value in the interval. You want to get that 130.4665 value. So I have 1.1865, and then I'm going to add the mean to that. And I get uh, that top value. So that's how you know your answer is correct. Uh, so this uh, is going to be your answer for that fourth question uh, of blank seconds to blank seconds. Hope this was helpful. Um, feel free to reach out if you need anything else. Thanks.